Oh, how I love our hummingbirds in the United States. Today I'm coming to you with a very different type of video that you have never seen me put out before. I'm going to ask you, if you're interested in hummingbirds, to check out a video that has been recently posted by PBS. I stumbled on it and I'm going to have to say it is phenomenal. The footage, the artwork, of the photography on there was just beautiful. But the most important thing is what you're going to learn and understand about hummingbirds. You're going to see these birds in Costa Rica and how they are supporting that country by pollinating flowers that nothing else can do. Without them, they wouldn't have so many of the flowers and how their little bodies are designed strictly for sugar nectar. And the flowers produce this to entice the birds to come to them. They come, they feed, and they go from flower to flower. And what they do is they're pollinating these flowers. Without them wanting sugar and without the flowers producing sugar, it would never happen. This is how nature set it up. They show how important it is for them to bathe because they are so tiny and they have to stay light because if they get heavy in any way, it's harder on their bodies to fly. And it's so important for them to bathe, which is a reason here I make so many solar fountains around here and how they bathe all day. Now they've got some birds bathing in a fashion in which I have never seen, where they just dive into the water. But then, of course, that is their hummingbirds that are there in Costa Rica, which some of them are far bigger than the ones here in the United States and here in Southern California. But still, is it something that that species does or is it something that some of them have learned to do to get the pollen off since they are so full of pollen and nectar, as they state, is very sticky. If they get too covered in it and they cannot fly, it could be their, their demise. They explain on how these birds have to feed, that they're just hours away of ending their life if they don't get enough sugar water, nectar from the flowers. They've got such fascinating footage, not just on hummingbirds, but a lot of different mammals that are there and a lot of different birds that are there and how they all intertwine and work with each other. Without hummingbirds, some of these plants would never survive. And some plants are the survival for other animals. So it's a trickle-down effect. I think it's really worth your time to take this just under an hour, beautiful movie they put together, a documentary on hummingbirds. But it's just something I think you'll enjoy. I think your kids would enjoy it. And I'm telling you, I've already watched it twice. And I think I'm going to be watching it again. They show them nesting. They show them feeding. They show them fighting and protecting their territory. I think you'll understand them more, even though the species that are in this movie are not here in, let's say, Southern California or on the East Coast of the United States. But it's still the same bird. It is still the hummingbird. Some of you come to me and say, oh, you can't feed them sugar. They explain it very well. This is the only thing their bodies can metabolize. They were designed by nature. Mother nature made them to do one thing, to pollinate the flowers that have no other creatures that can go in there and do the job. They were designed to do that job. And that goes for the same thing here, though here the flowers and the area is a little different, so they share that with a lot of different other insects as well. But the point is, I think we can learn a lot by watching this and understanding why they come to fountains and bathe all day. They can't stay sticky. They have to wash themselves. They have to get the pollen off. They have to get the nectar off. They need to keep clean and keep moving. They need to be light so they can fly because any little weight on them creates more energy to come from their bodies. And this is why they take baths. And that's all here, rain or shine, summer or winter, they bathe. 
daily, multiple times. They are one of the most fascinating birds in the world. And I think it's worth it for you to see this documentary. It is absolutely one of the most beautiful footages I have ever seen. And it's called The Hummingbird Effect. It's a full episode. Nature by PBS. I will put the link. It's only been up for four days and they're already at about 100,000 views. And I think they would be at far more if people knew it was there. They show beautiful plants, plants that we can even grow around here. Not all of them, but some of them and put in our gardens to entice the birds to come. Here in the United States, we do have our own hummingbirds. And what we do is we do put bird feeders out to help them because though naturally, you know, they would be able to feed on all the flowers around. There's a lot of flowers that have disappeared due to drought, though we're not in really a drought here anymore in Southern California. All these years we have been, as well as cement. We have a lot of malls and places to park, parking lots, and all that would have been fields of flowers that are no longer there. So what we're doing here is we're helping them. We're helping them get up in the morning, embrace the sun that's rising, come to our feeders, get a little shot of sugar water, which they so desperately need. Give them that energy so they can take off and do what they're supposed to do. Even here where I'm at, they come, they feed, and they leave, and they go out into the fields and looking for the food that they need, the insects here that they need, as well as pollen and nectar. And then if they don't find enough, they come back. Right now, a lot of them have left here. Why? I believe they have gone for the flowers. We have an explosion of flowers now all along the coast, all along everywhere. And I do believe by nature they know that. And that's what they're doing now. They're going after all the flowers that are in bloom due to our weather change that we had this year. Because I have noticed a lot of them have come back all of a sudden. Not a whole bunch, but a lot more. So as the flowers start to die back and develop their seed heads, the birds are going to be looking again for food and they will be returning to feeders even here in Southern California. The ones that haven't gone all the way up to the coast, all the way to Oregon and Washington and some go to Alaska, some go across the United States. They all have different flight patterns. They will come back and look for food. Check out this movie. It is absolutely gorgeous and I think it will be well worth your time to see it. And the reason I'm coming out with this right away is sometimes things are posted on YouTube and then they pull them. And I want to make sure you can see them in case it is only temporarily up there. So you can see this, kick back, and enjoy it as we did here. So with that, have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy that movie. And don't forget to eat what you grow. This year, I'm going to be incorporating tons of flowers into our vegetable gardens. <laughs>